When we see these recently released videos from the pro-life group that hired actors to go undercover and uncovered facts that the mainstream media reporters never bothered to dig out, we are reminded of Jesus' words. There is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has, will be taken from him. Through the years, archaeologists digging through ruins of the ancient Roman Empire and the ancient Greek Empire have found numerous sites filled with the skeletons of newborn babies. What they uncovered showed that these babies had all died just after birth, evidence of what the historical record tells us that pagan civilizations of Greece and Rome practiced infanticide widely. Infants were discarded, thrown into locations assigned for them as a form of birth control. It was not a crime for a father or mother to just throw their unwanted child into the heap and let it die. Roman law even dictated that any child that was deformed was to be killed. The Greeks in the city of Sparta gave their newborns over to the city's elders who allowed only the strongest to live. Plato and Aristotle both advocated this selective survival for newborns. Ancient Babylonians made infants to be offerings to the gods, a practice that spread widely and was carried out by the Sardinians, Syrians, Carthaginians, Phoenicians, Canaanites, Moabites. The cold and callous lack of feeling for a tiny helpless baby was normal among the pagan nations. But all that changed after the incarnation of the living God. As the Christian faith spread across the world, abortion and infanticide were regarded as wicked acts. Constantine considered them the worst of crimes, and the Council of Constantinople declared them to be cold-hearted homicide. But paganism is back, on the rise again, as the Bible foretold, a falling away in these last days, a strong delusion is believed by those who love a lie. People are lovers of themselves, unholy, without love. The love of most has grown cold. About 3,500 years ago, a cold-hearted pagan pharaoh king of Egypt, ordered that all newborn boys born to the Hebrew slaves should be killed at birth, thrown into the Nile River to drown. At the time, Moses was born, and his mother made a basket that would float and put Moses in the basket and into the Nile River, obeying the letter of the law, but not the king's evil intent. But the Lord God worked a miracle, and Pharaoh's own daughter found Moses along the bank, and she had compassion for the baby. She raised him as her own son, and the rest is history. Moses grew up to give his whole heart to the living God. He led his Hebrew people out of their bondage, and God gave us the first books of the Bible by the hand of Moses. And in those early books, God foretold the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And as Moses led Israel out of bondage, Jesus leads those who come to him out of bondage to sin and death and hell. Only the love of God in Christ can transform the human heart from paganism to godliness. God says, I will take away your heart of stone and I will give you a heart of flesh. The old preacher C.H. Spurgeon once said, a hard heart is Satan's throne. There is a stone in Scotland at Scone where they crown the ancient kings, and the stone on which they crown the king of hell is a hard heart. It is his throne. He reigns in hell, but he counts hard hearts to be his dominion. But a heart of flesh can feel on account of sin. A heart of flesh can yield to the gospel it can be impressed by God's word. It is warm. It can hope. It can love. 
first chapter of Mark, verses 14 and 15. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. You know, Jesus came into the world for one purpose, to seek and to save the lost. To repent means to say to God, Father, I know I'm a sinner. I know I fall short. I know I've stumbled. I've failed. I've, I've let you down in many ways. We are all sinners that deserve eternal hell. Every one of us. But we don't have to go to hell. Thank God Jesus came into the world and took our hell upon himself when he died on that cross. He died on a cruel cross. He suffered. He bled. He gave everything that he could give. Believe in Jesus. Believe that he was born into the world of a virgin. He lived a sinless life, a life without sin. And then he went to the cross. He bore our punishment upon himself with his stripes. We are healed through his blood. Our sins are forgiven and we're washed clean and made clean. And then he was raised from the dead and then he ascended to the Father, and he's coming back again. He's coming back. Are you at peace with God? Have you repented of your sins? Have you asked for forgiveness? Have you sought God's mercy through Jesus Christ? Will you pray this prayer? Heavenly Father, I thank you that Jesus came into the world and died on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me for my sins. And please wash me clean with the precious blood of Jesus. Please take all my sins away through Jesus Christ. I thank you for Jesus who died for my sins. I love you, Lord. Help me to live my life for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer from your heart, then God has written your name in his book of life. And he said that all who come to him, he will never cast out. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. You are now a child of God. There is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. Consider carefully how you listen. Who are you listening to? There are many voices in the world. Are you listening to them or to the voice of God? What are you doing with your time? Spending it with this world or with God? Where is your heart? With this world or with Jesus? When do you spend time with God's word and prayer? Just whenever? Or do you begin your day in fellowship with God? How do you listen to God? Is your life invested in drawing nearer to God, growing in His Word, fellowshipping with Him in prayer? As you feed daily on God's Word, the Bible, His daily bread will build you up and make you into His likeness. And whoever has will be given more. Whoever is filled up with God's Spirit will be given what will overflow and will minister to others. Consider a small child who learns his ABCs. He has them, but only if he goes on to use them and learns how to read and write. Then he has not only his ABCs, he also has grown in using them. If he never learns to read and write, then in time he will even lose what he had because he never put what he had to use. In the same way, use what God gives you Remembering that the Christian's calling is threefold. Number one, glorify God. Number two, edify, that is, upbuild the body of Christ, his people. And number three, win the loss to Christ.